The following program is made possible by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo, the next stage. 45 years ago, a Wisconsin senator and a Peninsula congressman launched Earth Day. As we get ready for the 2015 edition, we take stock of how well we are doing as planetary patriots. The game is the environment, the game is on. I'm Mark Simon, welcome to the game. In 1970, Congressman Pete McCloskey, representing the peninsula, which many people think of as the birthplace of the environmental movement, and Wisconsin Senator Gaylord Nelson built a bipartisan coalition in support of a day to recognize what needed to be done to clean our air and our water and to raise our consciousness, there's the 1970s word, about the fragile planet we call home. Now, 45 years later, more than 5,000 organizations in 184 countries hold Earth Day events that last through most of April. But for all of these efforts, our planet seems more in danger than ever. Joining us to talk about these critical issues is Adrian Etherton, Executive Director of Sustainable San Mateo County, the leading local organization dedicated to raising awareness about all the factors that influence the quality of our lives and whether our lives will remain sustainable. Welcome, thank you for joining us. Thank I've, you for I've, I've now put you responsible for solving all of our critical issues facing the planet. <laughs> well, I don't know that I can do that, but um, so I'm very happy to be here and talk about Earth Day. Let's start by talking about what events, uh, Earth Day related events are going on in the area and uh, is, there a, is there a sustaining theme? Sustaining being a key word here, Yeah, I guess. absolutely. Uh, there are a lot of events happening in the area, uh, and as you said, a lot of them happen all throughout the month, so there have been a number that have already happened um, from Shoreway Environmental Center to Marine Science Institute, um, a couple of, of cleanups. Um, lots of, uh, of events take place that are uh, compost giveaways or, or a beach cleanup. So I mentioned the cleanup in Pacifica. Uh, San Mateo County Parks has a couple of cleanups. Uh, Half Moon Bay is having an Earth Day event on Earth Day itself on April 22nd um, that will uh, provide free compost to residents. And Millbrae and Belmont also have uh, similar events on Saturday the 25th. So there are a number number of, of events of that sort, and uh, Tuesday evening, Tuolumne River Trust is having a uh, screening of a new film on the river, as well as an art and culture and music festival, so in that San should Mateo be a very County. fun one. Yeah, that's actually in Menlo Park. Okay. Um, we've come a long way. I, I'm old enough to remember the very first Earth Day, and it was really about what we used to call the ecology, mm -hmm. and the idea that the, the Earth needed to be in balance. It now takes in so many more things, and I know in many ways, your organization reflects that by having the name sustainable in it and the indicators you do, which you're going to launch uh, during Earth Week, um, uh, your annual indicators. So let's talk a little bit about how we've sort of moved from the concept of the environment, which, which was originally focused on things like clean air and clean water, to the larger sustainability. So let's start with what is sustainability and how is that different from how we thought about the environment 45 years ago. Absolutely. Well, as we look at sustainability, our, our kind of tagline, if you will, is the three E's. And this is the economy, environment, and social equity. So um, sustainability was born out of the, the environmental movement. Uh, the concept really uh, generated from there as, as kind of thinking about the environment. But it is a balance. And we need to have both a vibrant economy and a socially just society while maintaining that uh, healthy environment. So. As it's evolved, um, you know, really at, at the beginning, it was an awakening of the damage that we were doing to the earth and the movement saw a few uh, early successes with the passage of the Clean Air Act and the Clean Water Act and, and establishment of the Environmental Protection Agency. But we continue to celebrate Earth Day because there's still a long way to go and uh, it, it's an opportunity to raise awareness and to, um, to continue to look back on our successes and, and figure out what we need to do going forward. Now your annual indicators report, which is a great sort of index of all the different factors, covers everything from um, uh, the quality of our water, how clean our beaches are, to housing prices. How does that? How is that an environmental issue? How is say housing prices an environmental issue? Well, it's uh, it, there. 
I think the focus of the indicators report, the wide range of indicators that we're covering, almost 50 different indicators, really just points to the fact that everything is interconnected. This, it's really a big web. So for affordable housing, um, there are a lot of jobs here locally that um, have wages that don't allow folks to live in our communities. Uh, we don't have the housing supply for those folks. And so that's an equity issue. Um, and as I said, that's uh, what we include in the concept of sustainability. But you also think about how those folks are going to get into our community. And uh, in many cases, they're driving from very far away, um, possibly in older vehicles. Um, and those are uh, leading to greenhouse gas emissions and congestion on our freeways. Uh, there's a whole wide range of, of effects. So affordable housing is definitely a big challenge for San Mateo County and for the Bay Area in general. And um, trying to find solutions to that problem will really have a big impact on how we grow in the Bay Area and how we can become more sustainable. Okay, I want to come back to housing in, in a little while, but right now I want to talk about sort of what, you know, in some ways you look at the, the indicators report as like a report card. Mm -hmm. um, and it's about to come out again for 2015. Yeah. How are we doing? What kind of a grade would you give us overall as a sustainable community? Well, you know, I'm, I'm very optimistic. So I, I like to uh, think that there are a lot of wonderful things happening and there are a lot of uh, very promising signs of progress. But uh, our key indicator this year is water. Um, as I'm sure everyone is well aware, we are in the midst of a historic drought and we have a lot that we can do to combat this drought. And we really need to think of this as a, a systemic problem that we could be facing here in California for many years to come as our climate shifts, um, things like the drought or uh, on the reverse flooding and sea level rise are likely to become bigger and more significant issues. We could be in year four of a four year drought and we could be in year four of a hundred year drought. So um, really uh, focusing on the water issues, I think uh, we have definitely made some great strides in water conservation, and we can see that uh, here in this community. Um, a lot of the communities are doing really well in conserving waters. Some of the communities are not doing as well, and there's and a, let's a call wide them out range. right here on television. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not what you want to do. I understand. Well, I, you know, I think um, when you look at it. About 50% of our residential water use is going to landscapes. So the communities where you have much larger lawns and, and bigger landscapes are the ones who are using a lot more water. And there are certainly um, a lot of programs that can help with this. Um, many of the water agencies uh, coordinate through BOSCA a Lawn Be Gone rebate program. So if you're one of those homeowners that still has a lush green lawn, that's something that you really ought to think about as um, it's something that you should consider looking into that rebate pr program and maybe uh, finding some alternatives to that. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. Don't go away, and you stick around too. We'll be right back. It's been over 150 years since Wells Fargo first opened for business. Since then, we've enjoyed your community support, and we're passionate about returning it. Every day, Wells Fargo team members roll up their sleeves and donate their time to organizations and charitable groups throughout the Bay Area. Nationally, we've committed even more. In just the past two years alone, we've donated over $70 million to support schools and educational programs. It's a commitment we're proud of. Wells Fargo, the next stage. Welcome back to The Game. I'm Mark Simon. We're talking about Earth Day 2015 with Adrian Etherton, who's the Executive Director of Sustainable San Mateo County. And uh, one of the Earth Day events is the launch of your annual Indicators Report. Uh, you we're talking about water is one of the, is, is the theme. We were joking that the, the, the theme is what are we doing? Uh, <laughs> and so I just, I just had to mention that. But yeah, it's, um, what are the other red flags? What are the other areas of concern uh, for you besides water? 
Well, it, kind of keeping on the water with a slightly different tone is sea level rise, of course. And, and uh, as many in the community will be aware, uh, San Mateo County is likely to be the hev most heavily impacted by sea level rise. So that's uh, definitely a red flag. Affordable housing, which we've already started to discuss a little bit, and um, kind of uh, related to that on the uh, economic side, income inequality. Um, as the economy has rebounded over the last few years, uh, we've seen some folks whose income has gone up quite a bit and a lot of folks whose incomes have not gone up uh, really at all. There's been a lot of stagnation in the lower and middle class. So income inequality in our community is definitely a, a major concern. Now, that, that's, an, uh, that's an issue that raises the question, I think it's time to define what does sustainability mean? Because it's hard to imagine income inequality as an environmental issue, but it, the larger question of is our life the way we're living it Mm -hmm. something that can be sustained. And I guess that's, what's the working definition of sustainability? Well, we use a definition from the Brundtland Commission, and that is really to say that what we're doing now needs to be um, in, in thinking of future generations. So we should be meeting our own needs without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. And there's a whole wide range of definitions of sustainability, but many of them focus on the fact that um, what's right here right now needs to uh, be here for future generations. So one of the things that's driving that whole awareness of income inequality is very closely related to the housing issue and the level of affordability. We have a series of charts um, Garrett can put up for us. One of them is the median sales price in San Mateo County from 2000 to 2014. Now this is from your 2014 indicators report and it gives people a flavor for what kind of stuff is in the report? Look at the look at the steep climb once we sort of climbed out of the recession, um, and it just you know for those of us who were lucky enough to have bought a house um, and then stayed put, this is good news because <laughs> the value of my house in Redwood City has increased tenfold. But it makes it difficult for whoever's going to buy that house. There's another slide, um, Garrett. Market average rent, because this is something we're also hearing a lot about now in this county, mm -hmm. is what's happening to rent. It's going up $500, $700 a month, and it's just pricing people right out of the market. Absolutely. It, um, that, to me, is a pretty good example of something that's not sustainable. <laughs> uh, and there's one more that, that shows the interconnection between the two, which takes into account both home, condo, rental, everything. Um, and that's just um, astonishing, the amount of money you have to have to be able to live here. And, and what that tells me is that people at the lower end of the economy are, are probably combining households to stay here. Uh, people at the higher end are driving the prices up, and the people in the middle, are, are th I suspect, are the ones getting squeezed. Is that your experience as well? I would say that you've got it spot on. Um, the lower income folks, you know, we hear stories of people double tripling up families in homes, um, entire families living in. Uh, someone's garage that they are renting for 800, 1,000, 1,800 even dollars. Um, it's quite uh, quite astonishing to hear stories of that sort. Um, and as you said, the middle class, the, the folks in the middle are really getting squeezed. The housing prices um, increasing at such a rate are definitely not sustainable over the long term. And I don't think we're going to build our way out of this either. Um, you know, there's there's a good amount of of new units coming on the market in certain areas of the county, but uh, I think that's just going to be a drop in the bucket when it really comes down to it. Well, and there's another chart we have for that, thanks to the indicators report, <laughs> uh, Garrett. There's one that says the year housing structures were built, San Mateo County, and it shows. Um, the housing stock's very old, first of all, is what it shows. Mm -hmm. It's going to take Garrett a minute to find. I gave him too many charts. <laughs> it's, it's, once you start picking charts out of the indicators report, it's hard to stop. But uh, it shows that from 2000 uh, or later, only 6% of the housing that we have in our area has been built since 2000. Yeah. Uh, you, go, you combine 1940 through 1979, and you're looking at, what is it, 7, 69%. In other words, two-thirds of our housing yeah. has been built. Now, a lot of those we all know, get built and torn down or gutted and redone, mm -hmm. um, which I guess is good for the economy because it creates more jobs. But this is something that I guess is really um, on a lot of people's minds, even people who are able to afford to live here. It's a worrisome thing. Um, and so 
you said we can't build our way out of it. What, what do you think is a sustainable solution to this problem? Well, I think there are a wide range of solutions. So we do need to build more. We need to be very strategic about where we build. And where um, do you think that should be? I, quite frankly, I think uh, the priority development areas identified in Plan Bay area, uh, really along our transportation corridors in our downtown areas where we already have that infrastructure. Um, you can't really talk about house, uh, housing without talking about transportation. You know, people need to be able to get to their jobs, to get to to uh, schools and things of that nature. So so um, building in those areas where we already have this infrastructure is going to be ideal. And we have, we're very blessed here in San Mateo County to have a lot of wonderful open space and uh, agricultural lands. And we'd really like to see that preserved as much as possible. So building in infill development, I think will be a big, it is a big part of the strategy in most areas. Yeah. Um, let's, we've been talking about this in a real sort of local uh, level. Let's take a global level, no, no right. pun intended. Um, <laughs> nearly 50 years of environmental awareness, and, and we seem to be killing the planet. Um, and I guess the question is, uh, I guess the question is, are we doomed? <laughs> That'd be the really question. Or, or have we left a legacy for our children or our grandchildren that uh, they're going to be cursing our names for years to come? Um, <laughs> how bad is the problem? I mean, you, you reference sea level rise. Um, we all are uh, conscious of the uh, what's happening at the polar ice cap. It, mm -hmm. It's, you know, for somebody who's grown up in the environmental movement, it's a very uh, sort of distressing set of circumstances. Yeah, it uh, it certainly will be a different world in future generations. I think that's um, almost without a doubt. You know, the scientists are are pretty clear, and um, so there is a lot of concern, uh, rightfully so. But I think there are also um, you know, the, the environmental movement and through things like Earth Day has done a really good job of raising the awareness of the problem. It's something that everybody is talking about these days. I mean, it's you, you can't turn around without having a, a new story. Um, I just saw that the Vatican actually is going to have a climate change summit uh, coming up recently. So even they are getting into it and talking about it and really kind of raising that level of awareness and consciousness. So uh, I think that's kind of step number one. And there are uh, things that we can do um, as individuals and, and collectively as societies that can can try to turn the tide, but uh, I think without a well, doubt, things are going to be different. We're going to come back and I'll make you tell us what we can do. Um, <laughs> stay with us. We'll be right back. It's been over 150 years since Wells Fargo first opened for business. Since then, we've enjoyed your community support and we're passionate about returning it. Every day, Wells Fargo team members roll up their sleeves and donate their time to organizations and charitable groups throughout the Bay Area. Nationally, we've committed even more. In just the past two years alone, we've donated over $70 million to support schools and educational programs. It's a commitment we're proud of. Wells Fargo, the next stage. Welcome back to The Game. I'm Mark Simon. Over here we have Adrian Etherton, who is the Executive Director of Sustainable San Mateo County, and we're talking about Earth Day 2015, and we were talking about climate change, and I got to ask you about the climate change deniers, because uh, in some ways I think it's no different than the people who uh, persecuted Galileo for insisting that the Earth revolved around the sun, but what is your, what is your feeling about that, and, and how much of an obstruction to genuine progress on climate change is that? You know, I think um, in some senses it's it's certainly frustrating sometimes, but uh, in my mind I, th I think a lot of the debate is starting to move on and I really think we need to move on. The, the science is pretty clear. Um, a lot of times in the popular media they feel the need to show both sides of the story and so you kind of get to equal airtime, 50-50 of yes, climate change is real and happening and, and human activity is responsible for it. And then you get kind of the opposite viewpoint gets equal airtime when, you know, the scientific community is really more of a 97 to three. So um, it's frustrating in that sense. But I also think we, we really need to just move on and, and stop debating whether it's 
real or not, and start debating what we're going to do about it. And and a lot of a lot of places really are. A lot of the sh conversation has shifted from whether or not it's real to kind of just okay. Well, you don't believe it's real, but the rest of us do, and we're going to figure out what we're going to do about it. And we're talking about uh, the systemic things that need to change and the individual actions people can take every day. And um, well, let's I think, talk about let's talk about it. <laughs> First of all, do you think it's reversible? Do you think that the damage is reversible, or does it just mean we're going to have a different planet than we had before? I think some of it may be reversible. I think a lot of it is is going to just be, um, you know, it's going to be part of our long-term evolution, and and uh, some of it may not be reversible, and that's really uh, sad to see. One of the uh, one of the difficult parts of it, once you get past the debate about whether or not it's real is that it requires a significant change in what people are used to doing with their lives, especially Californians for whom our lives are built around the automobile. So is that one of the biggest changes that we just have to think differently about how we get from where we want to go to where we are? Yeah, I, I think so. And I think, you know, in my mind, one of the biggest things that people can do is just be very conscious of, of the actions that you're taking every day. You know, don't just kind of mindlessly go through your day-to-day -day routines. Really think about the products you're using, the habits that you have. And, and when you start to think about things um, as you're doing them, you know, sometimes you have that, uh, this is only the way I do this because it's the way it's always been done and there may be a better way. So, Give me some examples. Uh, well, you mentioned transportation and, and cars and that's uh, definitely a big part of our issue. And um, you know, there are a lot of things that people can do and a lot of things that communities are doing to build out uh, complete streets to make our communities more walkable, more bikeable, to uh, increase transportation options um, and, and even just simply carpooling. Um, so, you know, those things are, are big steps. It may take a little bit of coordination. It may take a, a little bit of kind of changing your routine and getting in that habit, but that's a, a big step that people can do. Uh, we talked earlier about removing lawns to save water. Um, a lot of this is, is about conservation. There are um, a lot of rebates and incentives out there for uh, reducing your energy usage, reducing water usage, and those things um, can take us a long way. And then, you know, I think it also comes down to the products that we use. Um, in our sustainability awards recently, we recognized Green Citizen, which is a local e-waste recycler, and they talked about kind of that need for us to have a cradle-to-cradle -cradle life cycle, and we really need to mean? think of, you know, not just where a product comes from, but what happens to it uh, when it when its life is its useful life is over. When you're throwing your cell phone away. Right, when you're throwing your cell phone away. Um, there are still a lot of usable parts in that cell phone, a lot of usable materials. So, you know, groups like Green Citizen can uh, help us solve that uh, e-waste problem, which is a very uh, nasty, toxic waste problem across the world. And um, But there must also, uh, there must be products that, by the very nature of buying them, you're either supporting sustainable activities or not. I mean, people like to talk about, you know, eating meat, Mm -hmm. Meat is very water intensive. Indeed. Um, are there other examples you can cite like that? Well, I think definitely our food habits are uh, a very big uh, place that we have an opportunity to change. We have a great local food system here. So eating local, um, knowing your farmers, knowing the source of your food, reducing your uh, intake of meat and, and especially beef to reduce the water intensity of our food. Um, you no, know, eating local ha reduces transportation, which is a big uh, concern and a big part of the um, environmental impacts of food. So that's um, one great way that people can make a big change. Um, packaging is also a, a very a big issue. So a lot of stores now have bulk aisles, bulk food aisles. You can bring your own containers and, and fill them up and, and use reusable containers. That cuts down on waste pretty significantly. And um, you know, a lot of us can do uh, do with a lot less than we than we have. So really thinking about whether something that you're purchasing is something you really need. And um, there have been studies that have shown that experiences are much uh, much make people much happier than things. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you're going to buy a gift for somebody, or um, you know, thinking about how you can treat yourself, um, think about what type of experience that you might uh, enjoy more than a product that may not have a very long, useful life. You know, you, you are talking about a, a almost disruptive transformation in how people think about their lives. Um, 
You say you're an optimist by your nature. <laughs> are you optimistic that people are ready to make that kind of a change? It, a little by little. Yeah. I think there are a lot of people who have already made a lot of these changes. Uh, there are a lot of people who aren't ready. Um, my philosophy is one thing at a time. You can't try to do everything all at once or you'll be overwhelmed and you'll probably just resort back to your, uh, your old habits and, and whatever's easiest. So, Plus we didn't get into this in one big step, so getting out of it probably isn't gonna be resolved in one big step. Exactly. We're running short of time. I did wanna take a moment to have you tell people uh, what is sustainable San Mateo County? What does it do? What role does it play? In Absolutely. Our we're a nonprofit organization and we're dedicated to the long-term health of our county's economy, environment, and social equity. And and uh, really our core programs are around information with the indicators report and um, showing people what's really happening on the ground in our community with data and charts and, and highlighting some best practices. And then the, uh, the inspiration side, we have a sustainability and green building awards program every spring that highlights some of the wonderful things happening in our community. Adrian Etherton, thank you for being here on The Game. Thank and thank you for joining us. And join us next time on The Game.